Hey guys, Russell with Two Trail Hikers. So now we're inside the RV. Um, this is part two to a two-part solar installation series that I'm doing. Um, part one, I'll post a link to the video up here. That's where we actually put the panels up on the roof of the RV. Now, if you watched my video on our surge guard installation, you know that on our Vegas, there's actually solar pre-wired into the RV. Now, it came to this panel where all the electrical wires are. And you know, keep in mind that, like I said in the previous video, I thought when we purchased this and they said, hey, it's pre-wired for solar, that basically all we had to do was pop two solar panels on it or a solar panel and it was already connected to the battery and everything was set up. Well, that's not the case. The case is when they say pre-wired for solar, they mean that there is a pair of 10 gauge wires running from the roof up top down to where this electrical panel is. Now, granted that saved me a tremendous amount of effort for sure. So I'm not going to complain at all. Um, but I am going to say that it was a little bit misleading to just have two extra wires in here. But flip side of that is I showed you those wires in that video and um, I can post a link to it up here so you can see it but what I ended up doing is we came down here and identified the two leads um, one is red one is white and because I wanted to change the wire color for my solar going to my charge controller I actually did it in green and black now what you'll find is back here in behind this panel is where those wires are and they're right here you can see i changed it to green and black and if i uncover this you'll see that there's red and white it's kind of an orangish red it's not necessarily red red so i know green and black green is my hot lead coming from my panels and black is my ground lead coming from my panels so basically i ran it from over here behind the electrical panel across and it continues all the way through until we get over to the cabinet where the sink is at. And then you'll see that it comes across, comes down, and goes into that porthole right there that I've drilled. Now, there's sawdust and stuff in here that I've got to clean out. But basically, I want to get everything mocked up and not give you one scenario and then have to change it and everything else so this is actually configured the way it's going to be you got your green and your black going in there's a red and a black coming out that's a separate pair and then this blue encapsulated cable set is what's going to run our monitor for our battery voltage so coming out of that we come over here and this is where it comes out right here underneath this toe kick. Now this right here, these panels, this is nothing more than wire channel that you can buy at Lowe's, Home Depot, um, pretty much anywhere that sells big box store and everything. You can see it's white. Well, I dug around and found some paint that would get me close to the color. Um, everything I found in a spray was either too light or too dark so I opted to go with the dark the wife liked it Beth didn't seem to have a problem with it but the concept of it being is what this does is it allows me to run all my wires inside of this channel and the cover just snaps back in place um, I've got it snapped up through here it's buttoned up and closed up down through here it came with this that kit was like $19 it came with the elbow it came with several other pieces uh, matter of fact, there's the box of pieces that I got just laying in here. And all of them have been painted. So then we run up and we go up inside of here. And yeah, I know this control panel's pulled out. This is actually the main control. And what I'm going to do is mount our battery control monitor up here in this panel right above it so we'll have access to that flip side is the wires come up come through here 
and I've got them just kind of hanging out in here right now because I've got a zip time in place and uh, get everything tied up. Like I said, I just have this mocked up right now. It's not a finished product. Comes over, and this right here is basically just PVC. Um, it's basically plumbing. I couldn't get electrical conduit in here because there's not enough room. I would have had to have brought it way down through here. And I wanted to try to keep everything tucked up tight where it would be nice and neat. Now, if you look inside of here, we've got our green and our black. That goes to our solar. Here's our red and our black coming from our battery. And, you know, from this point, this would be the load. And we're not doing that on this. Um, we're not going to have a load connection here. So we're just using these two terminals in this Ames MPPT controller. Now, like I said, this is MPPT. Um, they're supposed to be more efficient than a PWM. And this is actually set up where you can select the types of batteries. And since we're running those two 6-volt AGM batteries, which I'll put a link to up here, where we did the installation on those and converted from 212 volts to 26 volts down here in the steps, we're going to be able to set up our charge controller to where it's rating for AGM batteries and not standard lead acid. That's going to be a huge plus. Then we're going to have our monitor over here that's going to be able to tell us our voltage. But the concept of it being is with the TV. And for those of you who have a Vegas, yes, this is the mount from outside. Um, the TV that's on the outside of the RV, we don't use it. We don't really have a desire to use it. Um, it's basically just an extra TV. But this is the TV that came in here. I took this mount out. I reconfigured a bracket here to be able to mount this, and this allows the TV to be pushed up flush right here. The magnets hold it in place, and even with the TV pushed back, we can still get right here, and we can see our charge controller. We can see anything that's going on on the display panel, and then once we have this mounted in, this will be mounted over here, and we'll be able to monitor battery voltage and how many amps that we're pulling and things of that nature. The cool concept of this articulating mount in here is that once it's popped loose, we can pull it out like this. And I can sit back here on the couch and actually, you know, watch TV without it being tucked back up against here. And you can't see it from the side of the couch for the cabinet. Um, we've only had one incidence in Yellowstone where that came loose, but all right. So guys, now the only thing left to do at this point is to set stuff up and I've got to get under the steps, pull the batteries out, do all the wiring connections and stuff down there to get that established. And then once the battery connections are made and I make my connections for my control panel, um, excuse me, my monitor panel and cut the opening out for it i'll be ready to install it and then we'll be able to put everything back together go up on the roof again and make our connections for positive and negative negative. and like i said before I, i've got it to where i can run it parallel or series so i've got the splitters um, i've also got some extra mc4 connectors here that we'll be able to use to uh, custom link the cables and that's pretty much it. Um, I'm really anxious to get everything hooked up. So I'm going to start buttoning all this stuff up in here to get everything closed up now that you've had a view of it. And once we get to that point of putting some juice to it, I'll bring you back in. Okay, guys. So I'm going to try to talk loud. I got the air on. It's uh, still 86 degrees in here right now. It was like 94 because I had the power disconnected. I had the batteries disconnected. Couldn't run the fans, couldn't do anything. I think it's like 92 outside today. But we're done, finally. So like we said before, the lines are run down underneath everything. They come up, they come across. I still gotta tie this in. Um, once I tie this in, it'll be finished, finished come across and here's our controller so everything right now is working we uh got it set at 10 and a half volts to switch off um i still got to go in and make some changes in some of this stuff 
So our DC load is off because we're not using it. Uh, you can see our battery types, AGM. The battery temperature right now is zero degrees Celsius. I've still got to run the uh, temperature sensor for the battery. Um, the one they sent me is not long enough, so I've got to check with them and see if I can get one that's a little bit longer or if I just splice the wires. And uh, bolt float 14.3, float bolt 13.7. And we're back to our basis. Um, right now, it doesn't look like we're getting any charge, which is fine because we're sitting underneath the awning. There's uh, no sun on the unit. Oh, and this backlight turns off in a little bit. So then we come over right now. Here's our energy settings as far as our voltage right now. We're plugged into shore power, so the inverter's charging at 13.7. We're not using any amps or watts right now. So based on that, um, I think everything went good. It was, uh, I mean, I ain't gonna lie, it was a bear. You know, getting everything hooked up. I'll show you down there at the batteries here in just a second. I'm trying to get it to cool down in here a little bit. Um, you know, the connections at the battery are just positive and negative on the two six volt batteries. Um, that's relively simple. You run two leads from the charge controller down to the batteries. Now, hooking up the voltage monitor here, that's a completely separate thing from this whole kit that I got from Ames um, that was something that we added in so we could kind of monitor it and it was actually something we had in the planning stages before we did the solar so that takes a four wire system and there's a shunt and everything that goes in down there but that's a whole separate thing uh, as far as the solar goes I mean 10 gauge wire is a little stiff um, it is what it is. I've got it plugged in up on the roof right now, running it in parallel. So both of them are plugged in. I can run it in series if I need to. Um, but I think based on what I've researched, I don't think it makes much difference. Right now we've got 240 watts of solar up on the roof. We've got an MPPT charge controller. And then down here we've got two six volt AGM batteries. I'm gonna move the vacuum because I've been out here cleaning up. But basically we come down here you can see we got our two six volt AGM batteries our ground is right there that's coming from our charge controller and then over here we've got the positive lead coming from the charge controller got dusty in here so we got the negative lead right here it's coming from the charge controller on the negative side of the battery. We've got our series cable going between the two. Here's our positive post. That line feeding off is the charge wire coming from the converter. Then over here, the one coming off the back side there is the one going to the charge controller. And it has a 30 amp inline fuse there. And we come back and we've got the secondary wire that goes to the voltage monitor up there. And then the shunt and everything is mounted back here in the back where the ground stud is so you know not too bad it's just a matter of running the hot lead and the ground lead down here to the batteries from the controller up there and ran it through the floor or ran it down the side of the wall punched it through the floor in the cabinet in there and uh, everything went relatively smooth I think so this is the box our controller came in Guys, I'm burning up out here. I'm gonna go inside where the air condition's at, let it cool down out here. I got a couple of more things I wanna try to get buttoned up this afternoon. Appreciate y'all tuning in. Um, definitely stick with us. Hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video. If you have questions, like I've said before, I am no expert on solar. Um, I just did as much research as I could on the system that we were installing to understand how to put it in. Um, you know, we're gonna do a review video later on down the road once we've had an opportunity to use it and test it. And we'll load that to YouTube as well. So definitely hit the subscribe button so you can get updates. Uh, drop your comments below. And remember, all the links for the equipment and stuff will be uh, affiliate links down in the description below. Thanks for tuning in, guys.